today we're going to be taking a look at some arterial blood gas practice questions as part of the clinical skills series. In this video we're going to be following a five-step approach to answering the questions, which I have discussed in more depth in my previous video here. Starting with the first question, here we have a 22-year-old male with a background of asthma who presents with a cough and shortness of breath. He's speaking in full sentences, his oxygen saturations are 93% on room air, and his respiratory rate is 28 breaths per minute. And we have our first ABG result here. If you want, you can pause the video and attempt the question, but to answer it, we're going to be working through the five steps here. So starting with step one, looking at the clinical context of the situation, the patient has a background of asthma, they have a quite high respiratory rate, so 28 breaths per minute, and slightly low oxygen saturations, so we're normally targeting greater than 94% on room air. Moving on to step two, we can have a look at the oxygen levels, so the PaO2 value, and you can see that it's 9.5, so the patient's slightly hypoxic, but there's no significant respiratory failure. Moving on to step three, we can have a look at the pH, so in this case it's 7.49, which is slightly alkalotic. And then we can take a glance at the CO2 and bicarbonate levels to work out what's driving this alkalosis. And here we can see that the carbon dioxide level, or this PaCO2, is slightly on the lower side, which means it's more likely to be a respiratory alkalosis. Just to show this here, we have a diagram which illustrates the balance between the carbon dioxide and bicarbonate levels in the blood. And what's happening is that the patient is breathing incredibly quickly, which drives off more CO2. And as a result, the scale shifts towards the alkaline side. For the final step, we can see if there's any compensation present by looking at the other metabolite, which is the bicarbonate. And the bicarbonate is within the normal range, so there's no compensation present. Piecing all of this information together, this patient is having a respiratory alkalosis as a result of a mild asthma exacerbation. Let's now take a look at the second question, which involves a 19-year-old female with type 1 diabetes who presents with nausea and abdominal pain over the past 24 hours. Her oxygen saturations are 98% on a 28% Venturi mask, and respiratory rate is 29 breaths per minute. We also have a point-of-care glucose test, which measures 22 millimoles per litre, and we have a second AVG result here. Working through this example, the clinical context involves a type 1 diabetic with a high respiratory rate. So already we could come up with some main differentials for what the diagnosis could be. For step two, we're taking a look at the oxygen levels. The PaO2 is 13 kilopascals, which looks to be within the normal range. However, the patient is on a 28% Venturi mask. So we'd actually expect the oxygen to be around 28 minus 10 or 18 kilopascals. As a result, the PaO2 is slightly low for the level of oxygen the patient is on. For the next step, we can take a look at the pH, and in this case, you can see that the pH is 7.23, which is quite acidotic. In terms of what's driving this acidosis, we can take a look at the CO2 and bicarbonate levels. The CO2 is 4.1 kilopascals, so it's not respiratory acidosis, otherwise the CO2 would be higher than normal. But taking a look at the bicarbonate, this is low, so it's more likely to be a metabolic acidosis. Again, to explain this diagrammatically, we have a scale here showing the balance between the acidic and alkaline elements. And in this case, the patient has a low bicarbonate, so it swings the scale towards the acidic side. For the final step, we can see if there's any compensation present by looking at the other metabolite, which is the carbon dioxide level. So here we can see that the CO2 level is 4.1, which is below the lower range of 4.7. So the body is trying to compensate by basically breathing off more CO2. To show this on the diagram, the patient starts to breathe more quickly, where they have an increased respiratory rate in an attempt to drive off more CO2. And this helps to make the condition slightly less acidic. At the end result, the patient is still in an acidic condition, but it's slightly less than it would have been if there was no compensation present. So putting all of this information together, the patient has a metabolic acidosis with partial respiratory compensation. And the reason it's partial is because the pH is still acidic. Moving on to the third question, here we have a 72-year-old male with long-standing COPD who presents with ongoing shortness of breath. His oxygen saturations are 89% on room air and his respiratory rate is 19 breaths per minute. 
and we have our ABG here. Working through the steps, for step one, we can see that the patient has long-standing COPD and slightly low saturations on room air. But it's worth noting that given the patient's COPD, their SATs might actually be within the normal range for them. However, we do have to confirm this before making that assumption. For step two, looking at the PaO2 levels, it's 10.1, which is just above the normal range. For step three, we can take a look at the pH, so it's 7.35, which is again just within the normal limits. So at first glance, it may look like this ABG is a normal result, but it's always worth looking at the next steps as well. If you take a look at the CO2 level first, the patient has a high CO2, so the level is 7.3, which is above the normal range of 6. In other words, we would actually be expecting a respiratory acidosis for this. To illustrate this on the diagram, the patient has a buildup of CO2, so it should swing the scale towards the acidic side. The reason why we have a normal pH is because if we look at the other component, which is the bicarbonate, and we can see that the bicarbonate is above the normal range, so it's 31, which is higher than the upper range of 26. In other words, we have a great degree of metabolic compensation. To explain this, the body has realized that the conditions have been acidic for such a long time that it signals to the kidneys to increase bicarbonate reabsorption. And with more bicarbonate present, this helps to balance the scale towards a more neutral pH. To summarize, the patient has a fully compensated respiratory acidosis. Okay, we're now going to start moving on to some slightly more challenging examples. So for question four, we have a 44-year-old female with a background of asthma who presents with shortness of breath. She's finding it difficult to speak due to the breathlessness. Her oxygen saturations are 88% on room air, and her respiratory rate is 21 breaths per minute. And we have an ABG result on room error here. Working through the case, starting with the context, the patient has a background of asthma and she has low saturations on room error. For step two, checking the oxygenation levels, the patient has a PaO2 of 7.6, which is less than eight, so the patient has a respiratory failure present. Moving on to step three, we can take a glance at the pH, which in this case is 7.36, which is within the normal range. Although the pH is normal, it's always important to look at the next few steps. So looking at the CO2 first, we can see that it's 5.7. And because the CO2 is normal, we wouldn't expect there to be any compensation. So we can see that the bicarbonate is also within the normal range. So it's 25 millimoles per liter. At first glance, it might seem that this is a normal ABG result except for the oxygen level. However, it's always important to consider the clinical context of the situation. In an asthma exacerbation, we would actually expect there to be a bit of a respiratory alkalosis in the earlier stages, and this links back to the first question we had. This is because the patient is breathing more quickly and driving off more CO2. In this instance, the CO2 has actually started to build up over time, and looking at the result itself, you can see that it's creeping towards the upper range of the normal limit. And perhaps a few hours later, the patient might actually be in a respiratory acidosis. Therefore, although the gas shows a normal CO2 level, it's a sign that the respiratory system is becoming tired. And in a few hours, it might become worse if there's no intervention applied. Summarizing all of this information, the patient has a type 1 respiratory failure, which is secondary to a severe asthma exacerbation. And it's always worth remembering that a normal PaCO2 in an asthmatic patient might be a sign that they're deteriorating. And finally, we have question five here. So a 62-year-old male presents to A&E with crushing central chest pain. Whilst being assessed, he suddenly enters cardiac arrest. Following four minutes of CPR and an unsynchronized shock, he regains a pulse and breathes spontaneously. And an ABG is performed after return of spontaneous circulation. Again, if you want, you can pause the video and try to attempt the question. But examining the clinical context of the situation, the patient likely had a myocardial infarction which led to cardiac arrest and has now regained circulation following that. Taking a look at the oxygen levels, we can see that the PaO2 level is 24.1, which looks about the normal range, but the patient has been placed on high flow oxygen. So we would expect the PaO2 to be around 100 minus 10, or 90 kilopascals so it's quite a lot lower than what we're expecting. Turning towards step three, taking a look at the pH, the patient is quite significantly acidotic, 
with a pH of 7.08. And we can take a look at the CO2 and bicarbonate levels to see what is driving this. Starting with the CO2, we can see that it's 8 kilopascals, so there's an element of respiratory acidosis present. To explain why this has happened, the patient wasn't breathing for at least 4 minutes during the CPR, and this has resulted in a massive buildup of CO2, which has shifted the scale towards the acidic side. If we now take a look at the bicarbonate level to see if there's any compensation, even the bicarbonate has become low, so it's 14 millimoles per litre, which is the opposite of what we're expecting. In other words, there's also a degree of a metabolic acidosis. The reason why this has happened is because during the arrest, there's a buildup of lactic acid and other acid products, which basically consume the HCO3 minus ions, resulting in an even lower level than before. This shifts the scale even more towards the acidic side, explaining why the acidosis is so pronounced in this case. Overall, we have a mixed respiratory and metabolic acidosis, secondary to the cardiac arrest. And here we have a summary slide outlining the key results from different ABGs. I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.